Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagined. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And today we're going to have a quick tip video where we explore an adjustment layer in Photoshop that can save Captain Marvel's face. Really, it can save her face, Captain Marvel. She's like the most powerful Avenger. Sorry, Thor. She's the most powerful Avenger. And there's an adjustment layer in the Photoshops that can save her face. All right, fine. Let's just go to Photoshop, whatever. It, it really just, I made this piece of Captain Marvel a long time ago, and I'm about to send it off to the lab to get a print for reasons that we don't need to discuss in case anybody is eavesdropping. And before I send anything off to the lab, I like to take a second look at the artwork and make sure that there aren't any flaws or problems or things that I didn't catch when I was creating it. And as I stayed with the image for a little bit, I looked at her skin tone. And then looked at the rich saturation of warmth of oranges and yellows and reds in the entire scene and went, they're not balancing with one another. Her skin tone has got red, orange, and yellow in it. I've talked about that in previous videos on the channel that regardless of your ethnicity, if you come from planet Earth, you have red, yellow, and orange in your skin tone. And it's just not matching the level of warmth that I see everywhere else in the scene. I need to fix that. I should have fixed it when I created the artwork in the first place. And that's a little bonus tip here in this quick tip today, that when we're creating our artwork, whether it be a composite or just a general portrait, we get so caught up in all the moving parts that come into play to create the artwork itself, that simple little things like the overall skin tone of the subject could get lost. So it's a good idea to create the artwork, let it set for a couple of days, come back and revisit it. Because when you come back with fresh eyes, you'll tend to see some of the things that you might have missed during the creation process. So in this case, I know that I want to warm up her skin tone and balance those colors. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do it in the Photoshops, but I want to use a color balance adjustment layer, which is why I've been saying the word balance 1700 times since this video started. The other ways of solving this problem and warming up those colors, they're all great. I want to do the color balance adjustment layer because I feel like it's a often overlooked adjustment layer in the Photoshop's. And I have a suspicion as to why folks will populate it, mess around with some of the sliders and go, nope, no, this isn't working. And they move on to something else. So let's explore all of that. Now, before we dive in to creating the color balance adjustment layer, I have explored the color balance adjustment layer a lot on this channel in the retouching series. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Take a look at the card above. It will take you to the retouching series when you're done today. So let's make the color balance adjustment layer. Here's the adjustment window at the bottom of the layers window itself. I'm going to come up to color balance and it's populated at the top. It has the white mask or the reveal all mask. We're on the midtones here. Again, with the color balance adjustment layer, very briefly, you have the three different luminosity controls of highlights, shadows, and midtones. And where the colors get moved around will correspond to wherever we see the strongest highlights, the midtones overall, and the strongest shadows within this scene. Now, here's what I think happens. People make a color balance adjustment layer and they're looking at her face. So keep looking at her face and you're like, okay, well, her face is a little cool and I want to warm it up. So I'm on the midtones. Okay, that's good. Let's add some yellow to it. Oh yeah, I can see her skin. Keep staring at her face. Yeah, yellow, that, that looks, okay, red. Wow, ooh, look at, the, look at the fire though and the nebula stuff and that. Wow, if I add more red to that, nebula looks really cool. I have, okay, what if I add like green to it? No, what about magenta? No, that's weird. Okay, green. What if I go to the high? And you're no longer paying attention to her face you're looking at every else and saying wow color balance adjustment layers they're interesting but then when you're done completely changing your entire artwork you still look at the face and go mm, doesn't look good and then you mess around with the color balance and then you delete it and you move on to something else so here is a very simple solution which is why today's video is a quick tip because this is what i do when I need to use a color balance adjustment layer selectively and strategically within my artwork. So I'm going to be on the midtones and let's just give her a bunch of magenta. Ooh, magenta, it's pretty, right? That's awesome. We have the white mask or the reveal all. I'm going to invert this by hitting control or command and the letter I for invert. Then zoom in, hit B for brush. I wanna make sure that my foreground color is set to white and I want to paint with 100% flow and opacity. This is on black, I'm gonna hit the letter X to switch to white and now start painting white on this black mask to reveal all of that beautiful magenta. And now Captain Marvel is <laughs> reminding me of um, 
uh, Jem from Jem and the Rockers. And uh, I, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but Jem and I were going to be boyfriend, girlfriend. I really like Synergy too, but Jem and I were going to be uh, a girlfriend, boyfriend. And then she never returned my letters, which is fine because I didn't need her anyway. So now she looks like Jem. She eats too many blueberries. That's lovely. This is a mask that will only target her face. So let's return the magenta to zero. Zoom in just a little bit. Now our eyes are saturated with all this warmth that we see. We're used to seeing it, and the rest of the scene is not going to change, just her skin tone. We're on the mid-tones. Let's start there. That's where we're going to see most of the change anyway when you use the color balance adjustment layer, whether it's on skin or whatever you're doing with it. The mid-tone selection of the luminosity values is where you'll see the most change. So I'm going to start adding just a little bit of yellow. We're at like negative five. I'm going to add a touch of red, uh, plus five. Let's scale that back just a little bit because one thing that I can give you as a wonderful piece of advice with the color balance adjustment layer is a little bit goes a long way real fast. Now I'm going to come down to the shadows and I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow to the shadows. We're at negative three and then I'm going to add uh, plus three to the shadows. And again, we'll see most of that effect take place through here and around her nose. The midtones, it took place everywhere. Now let's go to the highlights. And let's add uh, a little bit of yellow, but I don't think we need to add red because the highlight's strongest here on her nose, on the top of her mouth, and so forth. This is where the specular highlights came in for the flash hitting her face. If we start adding red to that, that's going to look angry, and we just don't want that. We need that nice little mixture of yellows and reds in the entire scene. Let's come back to the midtones and pull the yellows down. We're at negative two now. We were at negative four. Now we're at negative two. So taking a look at the before and after, this is the after and the before before, after. Controller command and the number zero to zoom all the way back out. After and before, before and after. Her skin tone is warmer. It's matching the entire scene. It fits it and we were able to do that with our eyes discerning both colors and luminosity values because we simply used the layer mask strategically to put it all together. So my final thoughts with this there's so many ways to do things in Photoshop, as I've, said, as I've said many times before. I think what happens far too often is that we explore something in the Photoshops that we play around with and we're so enamored with all of the things that it can do that we tend to lose track of how we can use it strategically to create art and solve problems. So I challenge you, go through the adjustment layers, go through your favorite tools and steps and just make sure you're utilizing that tool to its most fine point, as well as a general broad point. If you like the content you found in today's video, give the video a like and consider subscribing to this channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. And when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks so much for watching today. And until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.